Okay, so today I'm going to just make some basic samples in between our other project work. And uh, these three samples, I'm going to make them uh, just a foot wide and, and several foot long. We're going to mark and cut three of them. And the cool part about this and these particular samples is they're, they're actually for Terry Fader's uh, property here in Las Vegas. So for those of you who don't know, Terry Fader is a uh, ventriloquist that's uh, world renowned. I believe he won America's Got Talent or something like that. He's, he's very well known. He's got a, a large contract here in Vegas. And in a, in a permanent show, it's very cool. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do pearl, and we're gonna do pearl with some coffee uh, or chestnut, and some pearl with metallic silver. And then I'm gonna do the final one in just pearl. So very simplistic, really straightforward, beautiful samples. We'll see how they turn out. For what it's worth, I love a, a mobile working table. This one's on casters, or I'm sorry, on pneumatic tires. I can weight it to about a thousand pounds. Um, just something I threw together with some random stuff laying around the shop. Uh, the beauty of this is I can move around big tables or concrete work I'm working on, or um, I move it everywhere in my shop. I'm not dragging it. It's just uh, ended up being accidental, but brilliant. <laughs> I think everyone should have them. <laughs> so, all right. And there we have it. Clean them up, profile them just a little bit, and uh, tape them and get them into epoxy. So I'm just gonna profile these up a little bit. I'm just gonna basically sand them, give them a little bit more of a texture and profile before I apply my primer. So there we go. I try to get them a uniform color. You can see as it's profile on the top surface, it's just removing the uh, darker color of, the, of the, the top surface. I'm using, I think, like a 60 grit or 80 grit. I don't want it baby smooth. I want it textured a little bit. Thank you. 
these down and tape them up. Get them in a primer. I may not tape them for the primer. I may just leave them like this once the primer's dry in an hour, and then I'll tape them up good. Then I'm not trying to get around the edges and stuff with, with tape in my way. So that's usually how I prefer to do it. <laughs> so, okay, there you go. So um, when I do samples, I, I like to raise it off of the ground, even if I, or my table, even if it's taped, it, it could stick, things could leak through. I just, it's a simplistic fact to know that if you could raise it up some, and the problem with that a lot of times is if you don't have enough of one thing to use, if you're doing multiple samples, the best way, Home Depot. Buy these little guys, you can stack them, they, they can link together, you know, with, with little corner pieces and stuff. And, and to be honest with you, I, I think some of them are out on a job site right now. I would have liked to use four in each one, but we're, we ain't got any weight on this. And I'm just going to prime them first, tape them, and pour right inside of my tape to create my, my perfect little sample. So we are just uh, finishing up the uh, prep process for our uh, sample boards. We've got them in uh, our uh, white water-based uh, uh, epoxy primer. And so putting final taping on them. And then now uh, we're going to set up our pour, do some beautiful, simple samples. Uh, as I was saying earlier, this is for uh, Terry Fader's property. So uh, I think this is going to be, uh, uh, oops, a nice little turnout. I think they're going to be real happy with them. And uh, we'll go from there. So final step. I always love making samples. I think that uh, it's it's a very vital part of any good business like this that you can provide them with uh, what it is they're looking for in advance. And uh, pretty sure that we all do it. We all got a different way we do it. And I just keep mine fairly simple unless it needs to be complex. Some of my samples tend to be a lot bigger than this. And that's primarily because it's difficult with a small little piece to really symbolize what that real uh, project will look like. In this case, she said 12 by 12. I went bigger than that. I went about 12 by 24. So I think we're in good shape. Easy peasy. All right. I like to shake these up a little bit. And the reason is, is because the powder condenses itself and starts to pack down. And then when you try to get it out, you only have a scoop, but it's a lot more than that because it's condensed and it doesn't break up as nicely in your little mixes. Now, I even do that with if I'm pouring the whole thing into a five gallon pail, I still like to fluff it so it comes out nicely and I don't have big chunks that are pressed together inside, so to speak. So just wanted to mention that. Okay, so that's my pearl. This is this is chestnut. That's a beautiful color there. It's very rich. Beautiful color. Love it. Well, it looks like we got one that's already chosen to be. Since I spilled some into it, that's that's actually more than enough. I don't have a teaspoon for this one. You ready? Okay. Some metallic silver. Shake this one up just a little bit more. Okay. I want to put this one in there. Okay. So normally I like to use a drill on very slow speed. Um, this is such a small quantity that I'm not going to worry about a drill. I am probably going to just mix about four minutes 
a lot of times I'll just go to say Dollar General or something and I'll get one of those little teeny plastic counters where you just hit how many minutes you want and hit the button and it'll count. A lot of people use their phones. I don't like that because I get my phone full of epoxy. <laughs> so I like the little counters, but I've done this long enough. I can count in my head rhythmically and just kind of keep moving without losing pace too much. Um, I like to always clean the sides. This applies to any epoxy. I don't care what you're doing. If it's not mixed correctly, you're going to get, you know, uh, a little teeny spot somewhere that's probably going to be soft when it cures uh, and, and does not cure correctly because there's unmixed portions of A and B on the sides here that just so I always spend time intermediately scraping the sides and then the bottom and then keep mixing and repeat. I get to about four minutes. I'm comfortable. I haven't mixed it at 100 miles an hour. If it's in a bigger pail, like ice cream size on up to five gallons, I'm using a, a drill and a full mixer on very, very slow speed and keeping it clean. I always still like to throw a paint stick, even if it's a bigger one in a pail or a smaller one like this, because as I'm mixing, same thing. I still want to mix it on the sides, on the bottom. You can't really do it with a, a vortex mixer or whatever mixer you're using. So again, just keep uh, plenty of paint sticks handy. And uh, you're regardless of the size of my container, big, small, I still am thorough with how I mix. I stick to the same principle and the same policies for bigger mixes or smaller mixes. I keep it consistent. And I think the thing to continue to understand when you're working with resins and chemicals is be thorough every single time. If every single time you do the very same things, you will continue to have the very same success unless you've done something wrong or there's a, a faulty product or your concrete's not right or whatever you're pouring it on. But again, just eliminate those possibilities by always being consistent and never failing that. Now while I'm mixing, and I'll mention this other times, but I'm going to mention it here too. I never take a pail and turn it upside down on anything and leave it all drain out. Let's say I got enough to, to fill a tablespoon or two. That little extra tablespoon or two might have been that little teeny bit of unmixed pigment on the side that you're going to have a soft spot somewhere that could grow a little bit bigger than just a little drop it was as you're rolling or magic troweling or whatever. So don't worry, don't be cheap. Whatever's left in that pail, after you flipped it upside down in your hand for 10 seconds and shake it once or twice, dispose it. Don't use it. You'll regret it somewhere. <laughs> I could pull it out and see on the stick that I can't see the stick right away. I got the pigment about where I want it. If I pulled it out, you could see the stick right away. Just keep in mind that's how transparent it will be on anything else. Sometimes I like a little less pigment because I'm doing something different. But for a primary pour or sample boards, don't overdose on the on the pigment, but make it the right the right equation for the amount you're mixing. Also keep in mind that epoxy, depending on its chemical makeup, and irregardless of its chemical makeup, still has to dry and cure in the conditions that you're pouring it in. So keep in mind the humidity factor. If it's very, very, very humid, it's going to cure differently. If it's very, very dry, if it's very hot, if it's too cold, now, there are epoxies, always, and other floor uh, chemicals, whether it's polyspartic, polyurethane, that are different. They're rapid cures, they're fast sets, they're designed to cure in cold temperature. Your average metallic epoxy, and, and ours including ETU, is not designed to, to you know, cure in, in negative 10 degrees. It's not designed to sit out in the sun in your pail for a half hour or 45 minutes when it's 110 in Las Vegas or LA or wherever. You know, if in Wisconsin or Florida, it's going to be much different perhaps in terms of humidity and cure rate uh, than other cities and other locations. So always keep all of those factors in mind. And if you hear me say it once, I'll probably say it far too many times, but it's necessary. Air quality and the work site is huge. How you prep, how you clean up after yourself, what condition you're, you know, we, are you got uh, the spike shoes on the floor? Are they clean? Are they gonna leave a bunch of chunks from a previous job on the floor afterwards? All of those little teeny factors play the biggest roles more than any other failure. 
clean, 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 clean. The work site should be spotless. This is chestnut, one of my favorites. Just all in itself, a lot of these colors have so much movement as you can see. They're very tasteful, I love them. So chip brushes, um, I love it. These are from Harbor Freight. I mention that just because I think it's the best deal unless you're buying from a, a manufacturer or a distributor who maybe could get them cheaper. But this was about 12 bucks. Uh, I don't remember how many of them are in here, 16 or 20 or 24. But these chip brushes are, are just great. You can make so many textures with them. You can get up in little corners and angles, even on floors. I'll put them on a handle of some sort and I can use them to get tight little cut-ins and uh, just great to move and work with epoxy. And they're so darn cheap you just toss them when you're done so it's it's great to have chip brushes sometimes i'll use them for a whole counter just because i'm good and efficient at moving my product with it if it's got a good flow and it's it's moving along chip brushes might be all you need so chip uh, brushes set these right on somewhere if i don't let i'm working make sure they're clean um all right so uh in this case let me uh just set them here because i'm going to go ahead and pour pearl on all three first. I'm going to save a little pearl because I want to go back over a little of my colors and kind of bury that color so it's not topical but it's kind of blended a little bit differently than just blending them together. Okay. So I'm going to just go ahead and pour all three pearl right now, distribute that. I'm going to save a little bit in a pail and after I pour my little bit of colors that I'm going to mix with it and blend them in, I'm going to pour some pearl right over top of that. It won't make the colors below it disappear, but it will mute them and make them look different like they're inside and not necessarily a hard line on top. Not everybody likes that. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so now the idea here, since I'm not doing anything fancy per se, I'm just trying to equally distribute it. So that's exactly what I want to do. So we're going to go back and forth, and I'm going to equally distribute this product. Before I apply anything else. I love our pearl. I think it's it's a beautiful color. I also like chip brushes. I know I just said this, but they're very good often to make wood grain. And there's other ways, other tools, and I'm not trying to make a wood grain, but I just think it's it's a good thing to mention. Also, really be careful with corners so you're not missing one by accident. I like to rub, rub the uh, chip brush pretty tight to my outside edges. Make sure I'm not missing a little corner. That applies a lot more so on a real job <laughs> than just a sample. You could use a weenie roller. You could use a spatula. It does not have to be a chip brush. 
no matter what you use. However, with a metallic, it will leave some sort of line. Um, so it's best to move the product as much as you can, as early as you can, so those lines will self-level and heal and, different, and, and disappear. However, the opposite applies if you're trying to make something cool as in terms of a design. You might need to come back, in fact, you almost guaranteed will need to come back a little bit later, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You still have some time left in the curing process and you'll get a lot more movement that will stay where you want it to stay at that time. One of these, I'm going to leave straight pearl. I'm going to do nothing else with it. The other two, I'm going to add just a little bit of color. Now the metallic silver, as you can see, is less noticeable and more subtle. I may add a little bit more and then bury it a little bit. I don't want it to disappear. I just don't want it to be too pronounced. That's a little better. I'm going to have to dispose of these. I shall be right back. So now, my thought process is I'm going to try to blend and hide just a little bit so it's not so topical. And it's a little bit mushroomed in the middle, if you will. And this depends on the client and what they may or may not want more than anything else.
Oops. Now this will self-level and it won't quite look like this, but very close. Mostly what won't look like this is that the lines will, will heal and self-level. And it'll look more like a nice little hint of color within it and not so topical. there. Now it's not topical but you can still see the color and we'll see what that looks like. I think that's what the client was looking for. They liked some of the pictures I had shown them that were similar floors. You could see a hue of the color but it wasn't topical like a, a line or a vein uh, or a muck with you know a, a nine inch roller or a weenie roller. It was more of a buried color that you could still see through the pearl. So uh, chestnut metallic silver pure pearl so we've given them three options there is one more thing I'm going to do and I can demonstrate I'm going to get my torch I'm going to lightly touch this up because it'll get rid of any impending air bubbles that happen from the cure process I'll be right back now with the torch what you can see besides the fact it pops air bubbles is that it can also leave lines and striations. Sometimes I do that and I like it because it will move the pigment just a little bit and give it a different look to it. Gives it a little more depth. Which looks, in my opinion, a little more marble. But of course the other purpose is removing any any bubbles that may occur. And of course one has to be careful of tape. <laughs> I don't think it'll lean into it. But look at the depth of one color with no other pigments to it. It has a 3D appearance that looks like a deep rich pearl marble. I love it. So the torches necessary. I'll do the same to these. One thing to keep in mind, look how glassy that is. Just like glass. Now one thing to keep in mind is that when you're torching and using this process, it doesn't often happen on floors. People ask me, do you do it on floors? I have, many times. It takes a little time. The biggest problem with it is that if you're on the floor too late and you're on spike shoes, because you have to be if you're on the floor, you don't want to leave spike marks behind you. That's the biggest problem I have with doing it on the floor. But if you stage it right and you're not 
looking at complicated colors. So as you're stepping, you're taking one little footprint where you've left spike marks into the next one and leaving extra colors. If you're staging it right or you're using minimalistic colors and you're backing your way out, you can use a torch that fits on one like this, straps on your belt, has a, a long nozzle. So when you squeeze it, it's like a brush killer torch. You can very carefully back your way out of a room and also use the same principle on a floor as you can a counter. And I have many times. But as I was saying, when you're torching, if you're not careful, and let's say I start going this way, now you'll see lines running this way that don't correlate with the rest of your pour. So you must be understanding of how you're moving your torch. If this is how I started my color pour, and this is how I ran my brush, or whatever tool I use, then that's the same direction I'm going to use with my torch. Or I'm going to have something that doesn't work right, or look right. And there is three simple, beautiful, and unique samples that I think the client will like all three and may have a hard time choosing. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs>
uh, a lot of bad things to fix, but they've made a lot of progress. This is going to be a gorgeous home when it's complete. Um, we're looking at, we're not even sure, this is a bigger scope than I thought it was. I thought we were going to do a room or two, and now it looks like we might get most of the property. Um, lots of floors, thousands of square feet of floors. Um, all new concrete has been poured uh, in the main home, and, and so we, we've got a lot to look forward to here. This is going to be a great project for Excalibur.